Hello there everyone and welcome to another edition of Lydia's Crafty Corner with me Lydia in my little crafty corner. So today I'm going to be sharing with you three different looks with the same inks and the same stencil. So we're going to be embossing through the stencil to create these really cool and different looks and if you play around with different colour embossing powders you can create many many more. So to start with, I am going to be starting with a panel of Solar White cardstock. This is four and a quarter by five and a half. And as I'm going to be embossing on it, I have added some anti-static powder, aka baby powder, just to stop the embossing powder sticking where I don't want it. I'm then going to take the flowing butterfly stencil and I'm going to tape this into place on my panel. And I've also taped off the smaller butterfly in the top part of the stencil. I'm then going to take my embossing ink and a foam blender. I do find that using a foam blender for adding the embossing ink through stencils works really, really well. You can use the embossing ink straight onto the stencil and kind of stamp through it, but I do find that this can make it a little bit more messy because it might add too much ink and it might go under the stencil. So I do find that adding it this way with the little dauber or a little blending tool works really, really well. Once I've covered the whole stencil that I wanted to do, I'm then going to remove the stencil and add over some embossing powder. This is crystal clear embossing powder. You could add whatever color you wanted, but I did want that white from the cardstock to show through. I had a couple of stray strands of powder from where the tape was, so I'm just going to take a dry paintbrush and remove those before I do heat set. Also, when you heat set in, it is recommended that you do let your heat tool just heat up for a little bit before you do add it to the place that you want it to heat emboss so it's not going to warp your cardstock too much. I did repeat this process a further two times so I had three panels to go. Now I'm going to start on one of the panels and I'm going to use the same colour ink so I'm going to be using Parrot, Lagoon and Deep Iris colours. I do like the peacock blues, greens and purples at the moment so that's what I'm going for and I'm going to add some of the beautiful Parrot to the bottom of one of the panels. I am using an, an expensive makeup brush, I think it's for foundation and it works really really well for adding ink to the panel. Once I have finished with my green, I'm then going to move on to my bluey lagoon colour. So again, as before, I'm using a makeup brush. You could use anything that you do have. I know that makeup sponges work, maybe a sponge or the normal blending tools if you have them in your stash as well. So I'm just going to add this to the centre of my panel. and I'm going to blend it into that green a little bit just to make that green and blue merge together a little bit more and create another further colour. So I'm going to have like five colours on this panel because we have the green mixed with the blue and the blue is going to be mixed with the purple in a sec as well. So once I'm happy, you can see that the embossing ink is resisting, <laughs> embossing that we've done is resisting the ink that we're putting down. So I, you can see that beautiful image of that butterfly just shine through these ink colours. So once I have finished with the blue colour, I'm then going to move on to my purple. And the purple that I'm using is the Deep Iris. Again, I'm just going to turn my cardstock around. I do find that blending from my right side, because I'm right-handed, really does help. So maybe if you're a left-handed person, you may want to blend from your left. It's completely up to you. I do find that there's no rights and wrongs in crafting. Just the way that you like it is always best. So once I have covered this top part of the panel, I did find that it was looking a bit stark. I didn't want such a dark and bold colours, so I wanted to kind of break them up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe away the ink first. So I'm just using a dry tissue and I'm then going to break up that ink. So I'm going to be using some of the iridescent shimmer spray from Altenew and I'm just going to tap this onto my products. It's project. <laughs> it's going to create a beautiful effect. It's going to bleach the ink that we've just added to the panel and give us some shimmer as well. It is very, very pretty. So once I've added enough splatter, I'm just going to move this off to the side and leave it to dry. And then I'm going to take my second panel and I'm going to kind of colour this 
Butterfly Inn. So I'm using smaller daubers for this one. So these ones are little finger daubers. I do hold mine strangely, so I am sorry. I'm then going to take the same colours as before. So the first colour that I'm going to take, again, is the green, which is the parrot. And I'm just going to kind of go within the shape so that the shape isn't really there. You don't have the outline of the butterfly rather than the beautiful patterns that are on it. So I'm just going to take these as my guideline and just add colour within them. So I did add like a little halo of colour around the outside edge of the last piece, which would be the edge of the butterfly, and then went for gold within the centre. And I did add some around the antennae and the hat, uh, the head, just to make sure that you could see it a little bit more. Once I have finished with my parrot colour, I'm then going to move on to the lagoon. I do have a different finger dauber for this. I don't have a finger dauber for each colour. I do have one for different ink colours. So I have a couple for the blues, a couple for the greens, like a light green and a dark green. And I tend to use these with various different colours. So my lagoon may be used for my volcano lake at some point, but it's not really going to and like damage the ink in any way, shape or form. So as you can see, I'm doing exactly as I am do did with the green. And I'm just colouring my little butterfly in. So I'm adding this and I'm going overlapping that green colour. So I have then created another beautiful colour within these two. And once I have finished with the lagoon, I'm then going to move on to the deep iris. And as before, I'm going to colour this image in. So I have my little finger dauber. And I'm just going to go around the edge where I think the edge of the butterfly is. Colour this in a little. Colour the bottom of the body of that beautiful butterfly. And then finish off the other wing. And there is my coloured butterfly complete. It does look very, very pretty. Before I do move this over to the side, I do take a clean, dry tissue just to wipe away any excess excess ink so I don't put my finger in it and do any smudging. So then I'm going to move on to my third panel and I decided to actually stamp these in. So I'm using Simple Shapes XL and I'm just using the circle from this. You could use whatever shape that you wanted to. Maybe a smaller shape, it would give you a more defined background um, outline if you were used in a smaller shape but I've decided to go for a big one. So I'm just going to stamp these into place and again I'm using the same inks as before. So this one is the purple one which is the deep iris and when I do stamp them I do tend to take my little tissue and clean away any excess ink on top of this. Reason being this stamping is letting down a lot more ink than it would be if I was to blend it in. So it's going to give me more of a saturated and stronger colour this way. Once I have finished adding some of the spots with my purple colour, as you can see I did add three, I do like my odds, I'm then going to move on to my lagoon colour. This is one of my favourites, I keep going back to it again and again and I don't think I'm ever going to get tired of it. Again I do add an odd number of these before I then take my tissue and wipe off all of that excess ink that's going on on the beautiful embossed butterfly that we do have there. Once I've cleaned my stamp off, I'm then going to move on to my green colour. Again, I'm going to use that beautiful parrot. I maybe should have used my parrot second and then used my blue to kind of fill in all the rest of the gaps because it doesn't necessarily stamp very well onto the purple. It kind of gives you a like a muddy colour, but if I'd have used the blue, because the blue does mix with the green and the purple, I would have ended up with beautiful colour tones rather than the little bit of a mucky colour that I do end up on the top of the butterfly. But I'm not going to worry too much about that. It's not that noticeable unless I do point it out. I'm then going to take some sentiments. So these are stamped with the Sentiment Strips stamp set. I've stamped them onto some jet black cardstock and used some pure white embossing powder to heat emboss them. I do stamp them a number at a time so I can then just strip um, cut them into strips when I need them. I do find this works really, really well and it's you've always got sentiments on hand and especially because the sentiment strips stamp set has all the sentiments that you would ever need, it is a very good one to have in your stash. So once I have cut those strips, I'm then just going to add a little bit of foam tape behind each of them and I'm just going to pop them onto my panels. I do use the guideline that's on my little mat that's below me just to make sure that they're lovely and straight. You could really play around with these if you wanted to, maybe have some diagonal ones, but I just wanted to keep these really quite simple so that's why I've done them nice and straight. 
So here are all three of the cards completed. They all have different looks and we have used the same stencil and the same ink on them, just different techniques of adding the ink over the top of that beautiful stencil. So thank you for watching everyone. I really do hope that you've enjoyed the video and that you do give this technique a go. Also, if you do, it would be great if you do share because I would love to check out your work. Again, everyone, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again really, really soon. If you do want to watch any more videos, we have a couple more here to watch at your leisure. And if you don't want to miss out on any videos that we do upload to the channel, it'd be great if you do subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.